Johnson & Johnson vaccine pause may be short, but deep concerns about staff hesitancy mounting, and Arkansas increases required nursing home staffing hours by nearly 30%, and providers call it a big win. This and more, next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, April 21st, 2021. To stay in the know of Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, if you are a CNA, consider becoming a NACA member for only $30 a year. You can enroll quickly on our website at NACACNA.org. Days after federal officials pressed pause on Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine, health and public policy leaders predicted it will return to use, but not without causing ongoing concern among key long-term care stakeholders. Advisors for the CDC are now reviewing whether Johnson & Johnson's single-shot vaccine can be def definitively linked to a rare type of blood clotting that has led to severe strokes in some recipients. On Wednesday of last week, the CDC learned of a seventh case similar to those that initiated the pause. About 7 million Americans have already received a Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Its single-shot formulation made it a promising tool for long-term care residents and staff. All the reported incidents have been in women under the age of 48. Joshua Sarstein, MD, Vice Dean for Public Health Practice and Community Engagement at Johns Hopkins University, said Thursday afternoon that he believes that the pause could last a matter of days or a couple of weeks. But he ultimately expects Johnson & Johnson's vaccine will return to use after health officials have a chance to review the data and broadcast warnings to clinicians about clotting concerns. Skilled nursing providers have asked for priority access to the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines while awaiting a federal restart or further limits on use. He noted that the virus itself is far more likely to cause clotting than a vaccine and likened the odds of being affected to winning the lottery. On the same call, Ashley Kurzinger, PhD Associate Director of Public Opinion Research for the Kaiser Family Foundation, said it's too early to measure whether the pause will affect vaccine hesitancy among long-term care staff. Her organization last week reported 24% of long-term care staff didn't plan to get the vaccine at all, while 15% planned to do so and another 11% being undecided. 50% said they had already been vaccinated. Nursing homes are under increasing pressure to get more staff members vaccinated. CMS last week proposed a final payment rule for 2022 that would require providers to report staff uptake through the National Healthcare Safety Network. Arkansas nursing homes staffing requirements will be updated for the first time in decades after Governor Hutchinson last Wednesday signed a measure that providers are calling a big win for our long-term care facilities. The legislation HB 1776 was passed by the state Senate earlier this week and sent to the governor's desk to be signed into law. The previous law, which was put in place more than 20 years ago, required minimum staffing levels to be based on a per shift basis. The old staffing ratios were equivalent to 2.8 hours of staff time per resident per day. The new standard calls for 3.6 average direct care hours per resident days, which is a nearly 30% increase to the previous minimum requirement. The measure also allows facilities to count medication assistants and therapists toward their direct care staff. Previously, the law allowed providers to count only RNs, LPNs, and CNAs in the calculation. Previously, laws also required staff members to sign in and out using paper sheets, which went beyond the federal daily posting requirements, but now providers can simply use the payroll-based journal reports that are already in place. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on Wednesday.